Welcome back to another mildly entertaining episode of Liberty Marksman. He's Scott, I'm Ken, we're your host, and what are we talking about today? Today we're going to be showing you how to install a set of KNS anti-rotational pins. Two ways. Two ways. One with a standard mill spec trigger. Mill spec trigger. And the other one with one of the drop-in trigger units. This one happens to be from Trigger Tech, which we will be doing a video on later at some other time. So why don't we bring you in so you can see what the this whole pin set looks like. Yep. So this is the KNS kit right here. It comes with two Allen keys, two screws, two dog bones as I'm going to call them, and your two pins. This actually has the groove cut in it for your center detent on the hammer. And this one actually has threaded holes in the ends. And we're going to unpackage this thing and show this to you real quick. These are the instructions. Oh, look. A sticker. Uh-oh, you know what that means. Nah, I know where that's got to go. Hold on just a second. <laughs> the big old wall of stickers. Bastard. Okay, and that's precision. As you can see in this dog bone, as I'm going to call it, you can see right here that you've got a milled slot and on the other side you've got a clearance hole. Our pin hammer pin has been milled so that it fits and locks in just like that. And that's just going to help it help it from rotating as it holds it in place. The other pin is actually threaded and this is your bronze adapter that you're going to help feed that thing through when we go to install. Now the actual screws for it are little Torx, which is pretty cool. Yeah, they're Torx, not Allen's, like I said before. And they've already got their Loctite on, so I'm not going to really fucking push that too far. There you go. That's how it goes. Alright, so first we're going to do this install with one of these drop-in trigger units. And the reason why we're going to use these uh, KNS pins is I'm going to show you. Um, when you have these drop-in triggers, the biggest problem with them are that your standard trigger pins, th there's no detents in the trigger. So it's just a straight through hole. So when you go to drop this trigger in the receiver. All right, so these drop-in trigger units are really cool because it's all self-contained. You don't have the pain trying to line up the pins and hold the springs down. But the biggest problem is when I put this in here and you go to put in your standard trigger pins, well, they will just literally fall out. That ain't going to work. So this KNS kit is perfect for that. All right, now that we've established that the uh, standard pins aren't going to work, we're going to put this in. And we're going to take our pin that goes through the trigger that's got the threaded portion and we're going to take one of the dog bones and we're going to hold it on there and start the screw. I find this is one of the easiest ways to do this. Just get that started so you're only dealing with that unit like that. And then that way, the one that would go on your hammer side, it's got the flat, you can feed that through so you want to push your pin through a little bit so when you take this link and you go on you can get it lined up and then push it back through. Now you just repeat on the other side, take your other dog bone, take your other dog bone, line up the slot on the back side. Get your screw started. We're going to take our Allen wrenches. You have to use both Allen wrenches at the same time, otherwise you're trying to tighten into the pin and it's just going to be rotating the pin and not tightening your screw. Now the recommended torque on those is between 8 inch pounds and 11 inch pounds. Yeah, but we don't know how to use a torque wrench, so we're just going to go German. You'll know. Don't go too tight. Good and tight. And if you don't like the amount of Loctite that they put on there, you can always add some more. So that's it, nice and tight. 
Now they also say that you know depending on the different milled lower receivers that you have, the thicknesses <laughs> will vary, and you may find that you have some axial play. This one I don't feel any, which is good, I think. But uh, if there is an, an excess of play, not to worry about it. They say that it'll be just fine. Hey, because it's going to float as, as a unit, so you don't have to worry about that. And now our trigger is in there solid, ain't going to fall out. Damn pins aren't going to fall out, and you're, uh, you're good to go. So that's something you might have to look at when choosing a drop-in trigger. This trigger tech does not come with it, but some of the CMC triggers do. And some of the other ones do, and some don't. So, just something to be aware of. There's other companies that make this, but these KNSs are really nice, and they have several different styles to choose from, and different colors. Of course, we went with uh, tactical black. <laughs> we'll just try to get a little bit of this in there. You can see that they offer several different types up here, and they have some other options. This is all on their drop card that's in the packaging itself. So, they have some cool items. All right, now Scott's going to show you how to do it with your standard mill spec type trigger or any... Yeah, he did the easy one, so I'll show you ah, how to do the hard one. I sure did. So anyway, you just get your disconnector all set up like you normally would. Go in and drop the trigger in. Okay, so I've threaded on the little brass attachment that's supposed to help you uh, squeak this thing through. See if it does. Hey. That's not bad. It worked out pretty darn good. It worked out pretty darn good. Now I can unthread that off the back side. So now we're going to remove that. And just put that off to the side. Now I get to try to put the hammer in with our... Let's see if I'll zoom in on that. Our milled piece right there. Do you have any idea what you're doing? No. Was I supposed to? Neither does 1.3 percent of our viewers. Well, that's why we're showing them how. No, I mean their faith in what you're doing, or I'm doing. Nice. Thanks. I resemble that remark. All right. How? I marked that resemble. Tap a tap. -a. Okay. So now you can see right here, you get a pointy device. Right there, we have our little tang set up. And then we're going to have our crossbone. Crossbone or dog bone? Make up your mind. Dog bone. You know, dog bone. Whatever. And I like to justify it. Oh, that makes it easier to turn that little sucker. You say yeah, tomato, I say tomato. Line that up there. Not really. Who the hell says tomato? I don't know. We take our Torx, set that in the hole, get that started. Remember, ready, tidy. Now well, that I've got it started. I can set up the back side. Both torques. Torques, not Allen's. Yeah. Some people can't tell the difference. It's the star one with the pointy things. I know, I was calling it Allen. Allen had nothing to do with this. Hmm. Not a damn thing. And then our it's good. Good and tight torque spec. And that's what the finished install will look. And I'll show you the back side. I think it looks a lot better on this receiver than it did on the Seekins because it kind of blocked the Seekins uh, logo on the other install we showed you. 
It's functional like it. and it looks cool. Nice. I like it. So that's a K&S anti-rotational pin install. Now you can pick these things up for like 30 bucks. You catch them on sale, 35 max. 25. But the whole the whole reason we did them on, I, I wanted to get a set for this particular lower, was this is my bump fire gun. We've got four or 5,000 rounds for this thing and they were hard. But we had noticed that the pins had walked out a couple of times and started getting some trigger issues. Yeah, and it's 60, 65 uh, lower receiver, so. A little softer, a little softer, a little bit, a little bit of worn. It's worn in, so you know what? I just wanted to stop that now, so uh, I decided to throw them at it. And it's a must-have for these drop-in triggers. Like I said before, some of them come with them, some of them don't. So the KNS is a good option. Uh, stay tuned, guys. We're going to be doing a review on this Trigger Tech trigger pretty soon, and then uh, another trigger that we're going to be doing a little review on here pretty quick is. Uh, the Geisley Challenge. We bought both um, of the Geisley Super 3 gun triggers. Uh, I got the enhanced version, the flat trigger. And I got the you curved. You got the curved, and we're going to try to see if there's a difference in in the speed. You know, who can put the most rounds down in set amount of time. That's coming up. It's coming up soon. Stay Segan's, tuned. Segan's build is on the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else we got coming down the line? Uh, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, Remington 870 stuff, uh, some 1022, we got, God, we got more stuff than we have time for. Yeah, well, that's So true. that's good. It's always good to not be on that edge of what the hell are we going to do this week. Yeah, exactly. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, share, get somebody else to watch, start watching these things with us, and give us some feedback. We always like to hear, hear the feedback, see what we're doing right, doing wrong. Let us know what you like to see. Yeah, and if we don't like it, we'll just block you. I'm just kidding. Uh, check, us <laughs> no, out on, <laughs> check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I mean Twitter. See you around. See you around, guys.